I think most people spend most of their time trying to do things to make themselves feel comfortable. But when you're improvising, all these skills and these things that we've learned to feel safe and comfortable and feel good about ourselves can be inhibitors to good improvisation. Because improvisation is such a free flow of ideas and it's such a freewheeling collaboration that it's risky. And it does require us to be vulnerable and to let go of judgment. I've always, on some level, felt a certain sense of otherness, whether it's because of being short um, or because of being the smart kid in class. I can remember at a pretty young age processing the idea of how much can I get away with in this class to entertain others while also maintaining the respect of that teacher. And I think humor in many ways was a way for me to draw other people in and make some, some, some friends. You notice that great stand-up comedians are the ones who have a very sharply honed point of view. You are delivering an idea, and the delivery system is humor. In a bizarre way, the act of a bunch of people going into a comedy club, sitting down, watching a performer or a group of performers, and they say things, and then they respond with laughter. It, it is a dialogue. It's like, here are our ideas, here's our thoughts, here's our perspective on the world. And the audience goes, yeah, we agree with those things. Or they go, no, we don't necessarily agree with those things. And both of those responses are important. What we're gonna do is give you a situation where two people might normally fall into conflict, and then you're gonna have to use agreement to try and figure out a way not to argue. Do we have any kibble? I spent a month in Washington last summer performing Barack Stars for the Second City and I was playing Rahm Emanuel and Rahm Emanuel came to the show. I think the overall point of view was that Rahm Emanuel was an intimidating, high status, but incredibly cool figure. There are other situations I've been in where I've felt like I'm delivering a pretty uh, uncomfortable message to someone who I believe needs to hear it. I mean, look at Stephen Colbert's White House Correspondents' Dinner when George Bush invited him to do it. There is nothing but criticism, you know, for that administration in that speech. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. To, to sit here at the same table with my hero, George W. Bush. Somebody shoot me in the face. <laughs> Don't pay attention to the approval ratings that say that 68% of Americans disapprove of the job this man is doing. I ask you this, does that not also logically mean that 68% approve of the job he's not doing? <laughs> Think about it. I haven't. It's not we're laughing with you. It's we are worried. <laughs> and he got away with it. We go straight from the gut. Right, sir? That's where the truth lies. Right down here in the gut. If there is a strong national dialogue going on about an issue, then it absolutely should be something that we're making jokes about. Because the, it, the making jokes is just communication. <laughs> when you're laughing as an audience member, a lot of times it's, it's saying, I understand that. I recognize what he's saying. I believe in pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. I believe it is possible. I saw this guy do it once in Cirque du Soleil. Audiences and performers can really resonate when there is that free exchange of energy back and forth. And it, it can be a pretty powerful experience on both ends. It's, it's a way of feeling like we're not just isolated little specks darting around for 80 years until we expire. <laughs>